Let's take this quickly to our political power panel. Republican strategist Ford O'Connell and Washington Examiner contributor Capri Cafaro. Good to see you both. Absolutely. Good, Good hey, afternoon. Hey, Ford, it, and guys, it looks like now that the president is back from his 12-day trip to Asia, the push is on. The full court press for tax cuts, Ford and Capri. Ford, first to you. Sure. Uh, can they get it done by Christmas? Because now we've got the Roy Moore problem popping up. Mm -hmm. That special election, Ford O'Connell, is coming up December 12th. You think it'll come before December 12th? Well, hopefully it will. They might, yeah, they might actually have to get it done before December 12th. Look, here's what's happening. We know that Democrats really aren't going to join on to this bill. We're not going to get 60 Democrats or 60 votes in the United States Senate. We may get a couple, but we're not going to really get any Democrats until we know we have 50 percent in both chambers. So essentially, we are bargaining amongst ourselves, and we have to learn to be a little bit of teamwork and do some compromise and do what's right for the American people. Mm -hmm. It can happen. It will happen, and it needs to happen before yeah, Christmas. Cap Capri, you can sure. see clearly that the push is on again for the corporate tax go down, the tax rate to go down to 20 percent. Right. And now the fight is against that, of course, on the Democrat side of the aisle. What do you think of this? Uh, look, I mean, I, I'm always for lower taxes. I know that probably shocks uh, most viewers as a Democrat, but I think it's about where those tax cuts are going. I mean, for example, one of the things that I think is actually good about the, the tax plan um, that has been put forward is uh, the lower taxes for those pass-through entities for small businesses. Uh, and, you know, but at the same time, we really, in my opinion, um, tax relief uh, is, is best invested um, in the middle class. When you put more money into the middle class, pocket as well as um, you know for those small businesses that are basically the largest job creators that we have in the United States and our engine of innovation that's really where we need to invest that and I think for those that make the argument that you know trickle down hasn't necessarily worked previously and we're also increasing uh, you know the, the national debt as a result yeah, I, I of, hear of this you're saying that you know that those are con those are considerations know, we need to saying. look at I mean he's uh, the president uh, vice president saying that we want to unleash a tidal wave of growth you talk about trickle down economic Economics there. I mean, the vice president of the Trump administration is saying we've had eight years of trickle down government. Um, and to you, Ford, uh, the tax reform plan would double the standard deduction and basically raise the number of people who don't pay any federal income taxes at all. It's now at 47 percent and rise. That mm -hmm. would go up by six million, Ford. Well, look, you have to understand the top 20 percent of Americans pay about 85, 90 percent of the federal taxes on the individual side. Look, one thing I think that, that, that Vice President Pence makes a great point on is that you have to understand, not only have we had such slow growth, EMAC, but essentially if you want right. to boost jobs and wages, the rest of the world has done it. We have the highest statutory tax rate in the world. Right. Obviously, our, our pass-through corporations are way too high. But people don't understand the industrialized average tax, corporate tax rate is 24.1 percent. You've got Britain at 18. You've got at 15. Right. You've got China at 25. We are not competitive on the global and, and stage. And, I, and, and I, we wait, need to wait, have wait, that conversation. Me, but let, but let me say this. Hang How on. do we expect to have boost jobs and wages with an outdated playbook when we know what the rest of the world's running yeah, and that's we know right. it works? And well, you know, I'll and, tell you something. Wait, hang on a second. I, I beg your pardon. When the Soviet Union broke up, even the uh, mm -hmm. former Soviet satellite states went to a flat tax that was lower than the U.S. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's astonishing. And we've been left with the Museum of Mass Confusion, that's the IRS, <laughs> because of this tax code, right? It's the best thing that money can buy. It's basically Look, lobbyists uh, weighing in. Go ahead. Uh, agreed, and I think that anybody in America would agree that a simplified tax code is better for the American public. But again, you know, you take a look at, um, you know, what are we what are we paying for at the expense of a lower tax rate for corporations? And I think we need to take into consideration are things like, the, you know, the elimination of the medical uh, expense deduction, which is in the House version, but, uh, you know, they keep it in the Senate version. You have, uh, you know, keeping the mortgage tax deduction in the Senate version, but it's not in the House version. Then you look right. at the, you know, state and local tax deduction that is, you know, capped for property taxes in ten thousand dollars in the House version, but totally eliminated in the Senate version. Those things matter to middle That's class Americans. That's an important point, Capri. No, so I hear you. I hear we, you. There's a lot more that we need okay. to talk about on balance. Okay, we got to wrap it up. Sorry, Ford Capri. You make a strong Thank argument you. there, Capri. They're going to have a heck of a time making this case as we head into the Thanksgiving holiday season. Kitchen table economics is coming up. Good to see you both.